Let's transition now to the Midwest. All right, fellas, let's go to the Midwest. You've got Houston. I got to tell you, before we, we debate the region, Coach McCall, were you surprised? Were you surprised by Houston being seated above of the ones, Kansas? Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. I guess the only case you can make is, is Kansas's loss in the tournament. Um, but I, it's, I mean, they were in a gauntlet of a conference this year, the best conference in college basketball and Houston was not, I mean, that's, we're just calling it like it is. They weren't. And I have great respect for them. I, I think they could make a run and, and get to the final four, but I, I, yes, I was surprised. I was completely surprised. Um, especially with, what Kansas was faced with even going into the tournament. And Norm Roberts is my guy. He's done an unbelievable job filling in um, for them at different times this year. And even going into the tournament was, did, did a great job, but you, you, you can't, you, Houston didn't play anybody they, they, you know, in the, in the conference, that's the biggest thing. They didn't play anybody. Um, their league's not nearly as battle tested. And that's the only reason coming out of this region that I hesitate to pick them is just that. And maybe that's bulletin board material for them. Um, I hope they make it. What a story for Houston to be in Houston in the final four. Um, but they, they are not nearly as battle tested as these other teams. And, and I think for them to be picked ahead of Kansas and we, we do all this net and quad one, quad two, and you know, Kansas and all the quad one wins Kansas had, they had triple the quad one wins that Houston had and they're not picked ahead of them. So I don't, I don't understand What's all the metrics for if if it's not really even come down to the metrics? Yeah, I, I think Texas beating them twice in a week kind of hurt them a little bit. Um, and it wasn't really, you know, that they te- Texas took care of them, you know, almost wire to wire. So I think that hurt them a little bit, them seeing Texas do that to them. Um, I'm looking at the bracket, man, and, and I'm gonna say Houston may get pat may get past the first weekend, but if you got a matchup against a uh, Miami, Indiana in the Sweet 16, I think that's where they could they could fall. Um, Indiana, no, they, they may have to play Auburn, yeah, in I, Birmingham, in Birmingham, like in, <laughs> right. in, in yeah, Alabama. Like, 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 think about that. Like the yeah. draw that Bruce Pearl got, yeah. he gets to stay in state. The, the The Tigers' War Eagle will be unbelievably represented there. For like sure. that's going to be a home game for Auburn. It's going to be especially if they if they beat Iowa. Think about that in Birmingham, lining up against the number one overall seed. I think it's I, I, I'm not picking against Bruce Pearl in that game. I'm not doing it. You're, you're taking Auburn over Houston. If Auburn can get past Iowa, Birmingham. I'm taking Auburn over Houston. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A first not- weekend exit for Coach McCall for the Houston Cougars. Hold on, Fanta. I said if they can get past Iowa. No, 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 no. This that's what I said. Auburn if they can get past Iowa, I think Auburn gets to the Sweet 16 over Houston. It's in Birmingham. Auburn's battle tested, man. They're battle tested. War Eagle. Yeah, they're, they're battle tested. Bruce Pearl knows how to cut war, and I'm not saying Kelvin Sampson doesn't know how to coach. But that, like, when that popped up today on the brackets, and I'm like, Man, Bruce Pearl doesn't have to leave his state. Like you keep like all the like all the Auburn fans from Alabama, like everybody's gonna be in that building. Everybody. It's this bracket, I mean, now that you and that I'm looking at it, I mean, Houston's gonna have to run through Auburn, Iowa. Then they're gonna have to catch Miami, Indiana, you know, a potential Iowa State, Mississippi State. Maybe, a, maybe <laughs> Miami and Indiana. Maybe. maybe Miami, maybe. Then you got on the bottom side, Iowa State. Who's they can they they're they're a team with a high ceiling, inconsistent. Who knows what you're gonna get? Xavier's trending up. Oh, by the way, we got Texas coming down the pipeline. Like this is gonna be the gauntlet bracket. Um, I was a part of a gauntlet bracket, um, and we lost Kentucky in the Elite Eight. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, we we lost to Kansas in the Elite Eight, and um, you know it, it, it's it's gonna get to that point where they're gonna run up against a team that. Is, is ready for them boys. And um, I, I feel bad for Houston. Like you said, Birmingham, you got to have to take down Auburn to get to the Swiss I, that's a, I mean, that's, that they, is, they that is intriguing. Um, that's that's unbelievable. All right. Here's the thing. That's I don't feel, unbelievable. wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't feel bad for them at all. They're a number one seed. I, I understand that they're going to have to play Auburn and Birmingham. They're better than Auburn. Houston's better than Auburn. I know I that agree. it didn't work. 
and and they uh, they still got some preferential treatment, and they will get to play in the Midwest, which means they'll play in Kansas City. They got to get there. Kansas got, got screwed out of that. I, I don't feel is bad Sasser, for them at all. I don't. Is feel Sasser, is Sasser <laughs> healthy? What's going on with him? They did. They look like the shell of themselves against. Me. Like, what's going on with no Sasser? Question they did. We'll see. We'll yeah, see. That's yeah, that's yeah. potentially tough. But I still like their chances here to make the second weekend. They're just so tough. I got to tell you, in the Midwest, guys, as we transition, this to me is the best combo of the twelve thirteens. When I look at the twelve and thirteen seeds that can pull off upsets. I think this is the best combo. And I say that because uh, Mears injury for Miami, that being up in the air, Jim Laranaga says he's whole, he hope said he could play. Guys, Drake is, they're old. Ooh. Tucker DeVries. Tucker DeVries. They can, the ball, they can defend. I like this team's ability here. I think Drake knocks off Miami in the NCAA tournament. Hot take. Yeah, is, that your, is, that, is that your 12, 12, 12 upset? That's my 12 point. over a five, but I took Charleston over San Diego State. So, so you've got two. 12s, the fans are special. Multiple 12s on sale now. Okay. Multiple 12s. I like I like, it. That. I, I like that Drake team. I, oh. I said it the other day on at, on NBC at, at uh, halftime of one of the A-10 games in studio. Do not pick against them. And, I, I again, a, a healthy Miami team. I think you pick Miami, but there's some question marks there. Um, Isaiah Wong has been outstanding. Um, hard to go against him, but Devries and his dad, man. I mean, poof, 19 a game, shooting 39% from three. They're battle Miami. tested. Oof, I, I like Miami, that Drake team. Miami is also small, and they get yep. even smaller without, you know, and are they going to turn teams over enough and, and be able to cover the boards enough to, you know, be able to beat Drake is going to be the question. Um, it's just going to be, I, I like that pick. I'm, I'm gonna tell you on that one. That, that my my five twelve is gonna be the Drake Drake over Miami. Um, Good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell you on that. So, how about just the bottom half of the bracket, though? We haven't even, talked, even about, talked about. We, we haven't even talked about Iowa State. <laughs> no, we, haven't we talked haven't. about. We haven't talked about them, right? We got a little mention of of Xavier and A and M, who's probably the best seven seed in the Ever. history of the NCAA tournament. <laughs> right? Like, are you right. kidding me? With what they right. did this year, and I know they got off to a bad start and they lost to Wofford, and that, but like, yeah, I they agree. Got, with you. They like they they got better, they improved, and they lost to Alabama. You know, like in in the SEC championship game. Like, I mean, what do you like? Man, a seven seed. It, it feels That's like the, the greatest committee. seven seed in the history of the NCAA tournament. It's it, not even it feels close. it feels like the committee was like, oh, we forgot about A and M. Here, throw yeah, them in. Let's, let's, let's plug them in. Right yeah, in right here. In there. Oh, yeah, we'll put them here. Oh, yep. Totally agree. I agree. I, I thought that that first off, it's not like AM got any favors, also, because Penn State has an all American. Yeah. Like Jalen Pickett and Penn State can win that game. If they could sh- fire threes, great guard matchup. Uh, Wade Taylor and Jalen Pickett being on the same floor. Taylor's arguably been the hottest guard. Pickett's been as complete of a guard as a do it all type of guy. So I really like that matchup. I think I it's the most underrated. First round matchup, I give, I give A and M a slight edge. I just think that they've got a little bit more uh, than Penn State, but man, they're dangerous here. And how, how about how much fun would it be, fellas, to get old school Big Twelve A and M in Texas? Texas. That, that crowd Whoa. would be a fun watch, huh? That, and that's what the committee just did. They're trying yeah. to get that matchup, but do not sleep on that Colgate team. Uh oh. Okay. Do not sleep on that. That team is good. Mm. Colgate is good. And what they did this year and just the success that they've had and the amount of wins that they've had and in their league, really not having any hiccups. I don't think they lose to Texas, but I think that game could be really close. And close games in March, when they come down to it, a couple right. possessions here or there, I, that Colgate team is good. Trust me. Hmm. Are you willing not, to take them? No, I'm not willing to take them. Um, but I, I, that's, a, that's a game that I, you can't, you know, bet Rivers, keep an eye on that one. I don't know what the spread's going to be, but keep an eye on that game. So, I, so uh, go ahead, John. 
No, no, I, I, I like the, that Colgate team is, is really good. I was going to go back to that Penn State A&M. I think Pickett, he, he's just, I mean, if you watch the games, he's so steady. I don't think Wade Taylor can guard him. Is, is Wade Taylor too small? You know, Pickett's going to get down there and get in the post and shoot the fades and yeah, like t- that could be the that could be the match. You're a Florida guy now, not me and you, we're Florida boys. But man, Taylor's physical. For, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's physical. Yeah. He's strong. Uh, he's tough. He's physical. I mean, it's he's. Gonna be, it's gonna that's be a great matchup because I think I, I think they're both like similar builds. Yeah, similar games. Both super competitive. Um, I, I think that that's that's that that's a game that's going to be fun to watch. Right. You know, we haven't hit on here as we're continuing to break down the Midwest region. John Phantom, Matt McCall, John Henson, producer Dagan Hughes, working all night. Dagan, you're the best. Uh, Savage. Savage. Our, our crew does great Savage. job. Um, Midwest region. Xavier, Kennesaw State. Um. You know, Kennesaw State's a great story. Uh, first time on their dancing since joining D1. I actually thought Xavier got a nice draw here with Kennesaw State. As much as I've liked their story, when I saw that matchup, I said to myself, okay, um, I, I, I like the placement here for Xavier. Now, they're going to – if they win that game, you're then staring at one of the three, Iowa State, or you've got the play-in game. Between Mississippi State and Pitt. Now, fellas, either one of those two teams is good enough here to to do something uh, in the NCAA tournament. Although, I got to tell you, Coach, when I saw the first four, I'm like, oh, man, the winner of that game in Dayton then has to get ready for the meat grinder, the root canal of playing the Cyclones in the first round. You have to play a playing game. And then your reward is playing TJ Otzelberger in the Cyclones. You know what, though? Here's my thing with Pitt. And they were one game away from winning an an ACC regular season championship. I am here at on NBC's sports, like in the studio, trying to advocate why VCU should get an at-large bid and they beat Pittsburgh. And that's not a quad one win. It wasn't a quad one win. So it's kind of like, and I have great respect for Coach Capel, I, the job that he did, especially this year. We've talked about the hot seat before. But, man, I'm trying to advocate for VCU to get an at-large bid in the NCAA tournament. They beat Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh was not a quad one win. So, you know what? I, I kind of get what you, you you pay for, I guess, is the old saying. And and um i i like that iowa state team but that that game mississippi state pittsburgh it's it's hard you know mississippi state kind of sneaks in as well um but yeah i i, I again i was trying to advocate for vcu and i'm like i am keep going back like through the notes and all these i'm like that that's not a quad one win how is that possible so um you know I think that that's 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 where they're at. They're they're in the playing game. So let's see what you got. And playing teams have made runs to the Final Four. We've seen it before. So we'll see what you got. I, I like that Mississippi State team. I think they take care of Pittsburgh pretty easily. Um, you know, defensive team. They got good guards. They played in the SEC. We're gonna get to see what that they almighty to score, though. They struggle to they score. They struggle. They do. So. And we're gonna get to see what the almighty Big Ten and that Big Twelve are gonna do because. There's some intriguing matchups that, you know, can determine, hey, look, maybe maybe some of these teams were inflated. Like a team like Iowa State, you know, so inconsistent. Are they really that good? We're going we're gonna to find out day one. So it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it is. It's going to be fun to watch. I, I think that if we get – first off, if Pittsburgh were to win two games somehow, we could get Xavier Pitt. That would be Sean Miller against his alma mater. Yeah, That's I love, I love, I love, I love Jim Harris Burton too. I mean, I love I him, and what a story yeah. um, for him to be there. I recruited him when when I was at UMass, and I, I've said this before um, about him. Just his character. He walked into his house, and he had every single school that was recruiting him, and had all the pros and cons of every school like up on the board. So I'm rooting for him. I, I, I mean, I think you know what a story, Blake Henson. Right, John, Florida guy. We got we got to root for him a little bit. Yep, yep. Um, he's, I had like unbe- him. he's had an unbelievable year. Yep. Um, so I'm rooting for Pitt. 
Um, but uh, you know, I, that would be, I mean, what a storyline. That's what, that's what the NCAA wants. They want storylines and Xavier Pitt would be a story. It would be, it, it really would be. Um, that's the Midwest. Who do we think comes out of the Midwest region? I'm going Texas. I'm going Texas. They're, they're okay. solid. Um, they beat the almighty Kansas twice in the past week. I think, man, if you see the how how they you know interact with each other, man, you see how much love they have for the coach, man. Like they, I think the beer situation has brought them so much closer than you could have ever imagined, man. They're playing together, they're smiling, because it's scary for a number two team with nothing to lose. And when I say nothing to lose, yeah, everyone's gonna pat them on their back and say, "Hey, man, you had a rough year, coach. You know, got dismissed. You guys did well." I don't. I think they're like, "Hey, look, if we if we lose, we lose," but their energy, how, when I saw their interview, man, how happy they were for Coach Terry, I, 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 I see them getting far, man. I see them, I see this being a good story, man, and them kind of, you know, a Houston, Texas trip to the Final Four game. Like I might get on a plane and fly there. That is going to be <laughs> so. Interesting. I'm with you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, that would be unbelievable. That would be unreal. and it would be in Kansas City, where of course Texas just won a Big Twelve tournament. We were talking yeah. about old school Big 12, Houston, Texas. Yeah. That'd <laughs> be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, That'd be fun. I'm, with, I'm with John. I, I, I think that, like, you know, when you have something to bring your team together mm. and there's a common bond and, hey, we're, like, not us against the world necessarily, but, man, they've bonded over that whole situation. Yeah. And that's what you need to do something special. You need mm-hmm. something to bond over, right? Like I'm using Furman as an example. Like Furman loses to, to Chattanooga on a ridiculous shot last season and they bonded together. They all decided to stay to come back together and do something special. And sometimes adversity is the greatest opportunity to grow. And that's what Texas has done. And the fact that what they've done, even like in that whole situation to – it was going to go one of two ways. It was going to be a disaster and they're going to lose a million games or they're going to come together and do something special. And that's what they're doing. So I'm with John, man. I I, I, I like Texas coming out of that. Coach Terry recruited me, man. And he was so, you know, rewind. I wanted to go to Texas. Um, unfortunately, you know, some things happened in recruiting um, where, you know, my, my, my dad had disagreed with some things Rick Barnes was doing and I ended up choosing North Carolina, but I was, I was all in on Texas. I want to commit my sophomore year and Terry was the head guy. Right. And so I know him pretty well, man. He, he brings a little bit of a looseness that I think Beard may not have had and it's boding well for them. Um, you know, they're playing loose, they're hitting shots, they're smiling on the bench. I mean, yeah. I wonder what's going on between those walls where they're playing, and, and and having that type of energy, man, uh, it's fun to watch. And I'm happy for him, too, man, for him to give up, you know, his, you know, sacrifice his personal success being a head coach somewhere else and coming back to be an assistant or being an assistant at Texas, man. I, I, I'm, I'm cheering for them. So I have this theory. I don't always love conference tournament champions because I think sometimes we paint a picture of what a team did in that particular week. And then Mm -hmm. we sometimes identify them as what they're going to do in the NCAA tournament. And you can't do that. you got to look at a team as a whole. However, if you looked at Texas as a whole, your conclusion would be they're damn good. I think Houston got the best prescription they could could use by losing today. By losing today. And, guys, even with how dreadful the start in the game was, they got back in the game. Memphis is not as bad as people are saying. All right? Houston was due for today. At some point – Houston was probably going to lose a game. They're in a weaker league, so it's hard to get an honest gauge. But I still maintain that Kelvin Sanderson said it. You know, he's got a group that if Marcus Sasser's good to go, you've got an All-American guard, you've got a lottery pick in Jarris Walker, you've got an elite defensive team. They're never going to be out of a game. And as much as I want to say Texas – On the perimeter offensively at times, Texas falls into some issues, okay? If Marcus Carr, as good as he is, he could shoot them out of the game. He can. Serge Barry Rice has been huge. If Rice keeps playing at the level he's been playing at, yeah. But I'm going to – I know I'm going chalk here a little bit. It's coming. Here's why. I don't trust Xavier's depth. 
Indiana's backcourt isn't reliable enough for me. Miami's banged up. Like I will say, for Houston and Texas, they got to like their pathway to, oh, yeah. pitch, to mean the Elite Eight. But right. I think it's Houston, Texas, Elite Eight winner of that game, obviously, uh, makes it. But I, I really do like 